Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again. I'm going to show you some optimization techniques to get amazing sculptures to fit into your scene. So let's get to it. I'm going to be working on sculptures by creator Same Housing. You can see they only have 43 followers, which is criminally low, so give them a follow and correct an injustice. Same Housing specializes in realistic weapons, mainly of the semi automatic rifle kind, and it appears most are intended for first person shooters. Quick disclaimer, this video is not any sort of political statement. I have chosen these creations very simply because they are among the best anyone has made in dreams, and a lot are fairly thermo expensive, allowing room for some optimization. We're going to start with engraved short sword. I could go on and on about how great these are, but you can see for yourself, you get the idea. That's the last you'll hear of it from me. Let's optimize these bad boys. We've gone straight into the sculpture detail tool. In case you don't know, this is the icon on the far right when you bring up the tool submenu. This particular prop is made up of five sculpts. The various colors you are seeing are the thermo impact of each sculpt when taking scale into account. I like seeing that as a metric, but my objective here is not to get all of the sculpts the same color. Being that these weapons we'll be seeing are made of roughly the same materials, what we're looking for is continuity of detail throughout the prop. Right here the cross guard in red has a far smaller fleck than the blue blade. I'm going to use the blade as my detail objective and attempt to roughly match the fleck size on the cross guard to that. Once I've done that you can see that the components of the hilt are way tighter than the blade and the cross guard. So once again I'm going to lower the detail of the hilt sculpts until the flecks are roughly the same size as those on the cross guard. As far as I can tell, there is no visible difference between what we have and what we started with, but as you can see, we've already cut graphics thermal from 13 to 7%. But that was quick and dirty, it wasn't perfect. I'll go back in and even up the flex even more for more gain. Just in case you're not familiar with this sculpture detail tool, you use this by hovering your pointer over the sculpture you want to alter. It will highlight you will add or subtract detail based on the icon on the right side of the screen. In this case, it's a negative sign, so we are subtracting sculpture detail. Press R2 to use the tool. You may not even notice a difference. Very often you can reduce sculpture detail a couple of times without even noticing it, even up close. That evens up things a bit better. Let's see what the thermo is like now. We're at 5% and that's pretty usable. You can see our detail is still great. You could probably use this as a first person weapon still without issues. In most circumstances you still won't need this sword this tight and can reduce further so let's give it a shot. If you're using this as a third person weapon you will never see it as close as we have at any point in this video. The principles are exactly the same but we're going to push further and be less careful with the fine detail. If you push too far just dial it back a notch. The current detail on the blade is perfectly acceptable from a distance, so let's see if we can match the rest of the sword up with that. That's finished. Let's take a look at the thermo now. Hey, 2%, that's really good, and the sword still looks really good too. I'm going to bring the original into the scene so we can compare them at a reasonable distance for just about anything that isn't first person. If you can see the difference between those two, your vision is a lot better than mine. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of dreams when you work with the engine a little instead of trying to brute force everything. Right here we're moving into first person range and it's still exceedingly difficult to tell the difference between the two. Up next we have Heavy Machine Gun. This prop is made of a bunch of different sculpts and the sculpture includes two versions. One with the cover open and one with it closed. I will be working with the version that has the cover closed. The philosophy here isn't any different than the sword. One thing I want to point out on this model that will probably apply frequently when you're optimizing is the small parts and how to handle them. The rear sight on this gun is tiny and it's super tight. I imagine same housing sculpted this large and then scaled it down. We can reduce this a lot. The thing though is that we can't get the flex size even with the other components of the gun. Instead what we need to concentrate on is the integrity of the shape. What we're looking to do is reduce until it starts to lose its general shape. As long as the shape is retained it will still be completely recognizable at any distance. And as you can see the flex sizes are nowhere near the same. Under the cover there's a chain of bullets extending from the magazine. This is another instance where you want to take the circumstance of the sculpt into account. 
These are small and barely visible, so once again our objective is to simply retain the general shape of the thing, and it will look fine from a distance. After that, continuing our technique for a bit. Sometimes it will be advantageous to raise the sculpture detail of a sculpt to match the rest of the prop. Generally you want to find a part of the sculpt that is a detail level you like. If other parts are looser, then sacrifice a little thermo to even it up. Your objective here is to make a great prop and make it useful for your content, not to reduce everything into oblivion. And this is another example of handling a small prop. Again, our main priority here is retention of the general shape. Its size and distance from the camera will take care of the rest. That takes care of the initial pass with a thermo of 8% down from 12. Not a huge difference, but that's another sculpt or two you can squeeze into a scene that you would otherwise have left out. And like the sword, it's pretty much impossible to tell the difference. Right here I'm going to push it a little further and see if I can get the thermo down to a more desirable level that makes it more useful as a scene prop rather than something that's featured right in front of the camera. Same techniques, end result is 4% graphics thermo and again the visual difference is not real apparent. This is double barrel shotgun dirty. Great little post apocalyptic prop here. We're starting with a graphics thermo of 8% for the gun by itself. This sculpture has a lot of detail baked in that we can't really alter. Because of that, I wanted to use this as an example of knowing the limitations of changing sculpture, sculpture detail. This is like the other weapons we've seen so far made up of several sculpts. I'm going to pick one that has a desirable amount of detail and try to match the others up with it. This sculpt right here is fairly detailed. In instances like this, you may want to concentrate more on retaining sufficient detail integrity rather than strictly matching flex sizes. Kind of the same thing with this sculpt, especially if you're planning on using, using this for a first person game, you'd want to keep your eye on the way the detail changes as you reduce. In my opinion, the shape loses its integrity in an undesirable way right away. We've also gotten down to 6% graphics thermo at this point, so I opt to leave this at a high level of detail. You may make a different choice for your content, but it's something to consider. Another issue is sculpted patterns. These have a huge potential to deform in undesirable ways, which you can see here. Because of these many factors, this prop turns out to be a good example of sometimes not being able to reduce the graphics thermo impact of a sculpt by very much. I think it's still a great prop for 6% graphics thermo, and I hope to see it someday in a scene with my zombie vocalizations. I might work on that a little myself. Up next we have AK-47 Clean High Res. This is an extremely clean and detailed sculpt with a massive graphics cost of 60%. The question here is if this is just a pretty sculpture or is it something we can put to use in a working scene? Let's find out. First thing I do is find out how fuzzy things get, come to the conclusion that the level of tightness is sufficient, and then proceed with techniques we've talked about. End result is 26% graphics thermo and still looking ridiculously good. But I think we can get this down a bit further to provide sufficient headroom for other stuff in a scene. One thing we can concentrate on for certain first person scenarios is that the weapon will only be visible as held by the player character. We can also optimize especially for this. Certain parts of the weapon may not be visible by the camera while held. If they're not visible during reload animations, we can delete them. In this instance, I'm concluding that the butt of the stock isn't necessary and I'm going to remove it, which nets me 1% graphics thermo. Another thing to take into account is distance from the camera. Parts of the weapon close to the camera need to be super tight. Parts farther away can be much less detailed and the main thing to concentrate on there is retention of shape. Parts that aren't routinely visible, like parts underneath the rifle, can also be reduced a bit more than others. The end result is 13% graphics thermo and the weapon still looks fantastic from a first person perspective. That is highly usable in a first person title that features good looking weapons. The last optimization we're going to take a look at is AK-47 Clean Low Res. We're going to do this to concentrate on using something like this from a third person perspective, 
maybe in a game where you want to have lots of different weapons for the players to pick up and swap out. We're starting at 6% graphics thermo and really if you're willing to push far enough there is plenty of headroom here for massive improvement. I think in a game where you want something like a dozen swappable weapons you'd be aiming for 2-3% graphics thermo for each weapon, so let's make that our target. Techniques here are no different than any other we've seen so far, just a slightly more efficient sculpt with a slightly more aggressive target cost, and the end result is 3% graphics thermo. One thing we haven't done yet is put them next to a puppet to see what the scale is like. We know from our use of the grid that these are quite large. But to get them to the scale of the puppet we need to shrink them down about a hundred times. This is understandable given the difficulty of sculpting massive detail on tiny scales. But when we shrink these down this far the detail is fantastic so clearly we have the capability to push further than 3%. The rifle looks so good next to the puppet here, I'm not even reducing with care, and it still looks really good at the end. And we've gotten it down to 2%, so mission accomplished. I hope this video has been helpful and given you some insight into using the Sculpture Detail tool. I have more videos planned and coming soon, so I'll see you next time.